All right, so let's talk about photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is one of those scientific terms, um, like most scientific terms, that just its word roots tell you what it is. And if you understand the word roots, you already understand a little bit about what it is. So let's talk about photosynthesis and break it down. So the first part, photo, means light. And when we're talking about photosynthesis in plants and producers, um, we, we know that light is important for its vital for photosynthesis to happen. Uh, and typically we're talking about sunlight. So we'll talk about how plants and other producers are able to get that, um, to get that light energy, use the light energy. And then the synthesis part of it is basically the putting together of parts or elements to, so as to form a whole, a new whole. So if you've studied chemical reactions and you know synthesis reactions, then you, you kind of understand that whole concept. So photosynthesis is not necessarily a synthesis reaction. It's actually a two-part reaction that's, that's pretty complex. But still, you start out with certain puzzle pieces, and they get put together to form something totally different that the plant needs, right? Okay, so let's look at light. So the light energy is uh, absorbed by a substance called chlorophyll. I like to call it the magic pigment because it's really cool. Pigment might be a new term for some of you, so look it up, and if you can't figure it out, come and find me and ask me. But chlorophyll is a pigment that is actually uh, able to absorb light energy, and that light energy is basically the fuel that's, that uh, is used to to uh, power the process of photosynthesis. And chlor we're, we're going to talk about vascular plants. It makes uh, the discussion of photosynthesis really simple, but um, vascular plants are not the only plants, uh, not the only organisms that do photosynthesis to produce their food. There are other autotrophs or producers. Um, so uh, you might have uh, cyanobacteria, that is a bacteria, of course, that uh, does photosynthesis and it has chlorophyll and there are multiple types of chlorophyll probably the one that you're most familiar with would be chlorophyll A it's the green one and not all chlorophylls reflect green light so they don't all appear green and then there's uh, there are protists like algae protists are one celled organisms they're not plants they're not animals they're in their own kingdom and like algae or pond scum here, they also are producers, so they do photosynthesis. Now, in vascular plants, which I'll explain a little bit more later, uh, the chlorophyll is clumped into these little bodies, these little organelles within the cell called chloroplast. So chloroplast is just a body that contains all the chlorophyll. So you don't see the chlorophyll out in the cytoplasm of the cell. It's, it's contained within those chloroplasts. Okay, so that's how the light energy is absorbed, is through the, with the chlorophyll. Okay, and then let's look at the synthesis part of the term photosynthesis. So uh, if synthesis is taking those individual puzzle pieces and putting them together to create a new whole, we have to look at what those individual puzzle pieces are and how they are uh, attained by the, uh, by the plant or by the producer. Okay, so we know about light. Light is absorbed by the chlorophyll. The next ingredient that's important is carbon dioxide or CO2 and water. So we're going to look at how those get into the plants. We're going to talk about non uh, I'm sorry, we're going to talk about vascular plants. So um, to make it simple and easy to talk about. So we're, now we're going to talk about how the plants get carbon dioxide and water. Okay, so the carbon dioxide gets in through stoma, and stoma is just a fancy science term that means opening or hole. Okay, so if you look on in this image, there are these little bean-shaped uh, sections. They look like little beans, and what those are are guard cells. So there's a guard cell on one side, a guard cell on the other side, and they're specialized cells, and they're really cool because guard cells, when they're like this, they're closed, there's no stoma, there's no opening. But they can also do this, they can also pull apart, and when they do, they create this opening called a stoma. And it's through those stoma that the carbon dioxide is able to get into the plant from the surrounding atmosphere. Okay, water, 
<coughs> water is necessary for photosynthesis as well. If you water your plants and you get water on the leaves, it doesn't do anything but wash the leaves. They still, they, the leaves cannot absorb the water that they need for photosynthesis. That has to come up through the roots. So in the roots there are these specialized cells, uh, just like the guard cells are specialized in the leaves, in the roots there are specialized cells that um, are able to absorb water from the surrounding soil or, or ground. Okay, So when it rains or when you water a plant, the water goes down into the soil or the dirt, and then those specialized cells are, are able to absorb that water. And then that water can't just stay in the root because photosynthesis in vascular plants typically takes place in the leaves. So how does it get from the root that's under the ground all the way up into the leaf? Through the stem. So that is um, a vascular tissue called xylem and that's why vascular plants get there are called vascular plants is because if you've ever studied cardiovascular system this is another great science term you know that the vascular part means vessels or tubes transport tubes so in vascular plants there are transport tubes that are responsible for carrying water from those from the root all the way up through the stem and into the leaf okay some of the water is used uh, for other um, for other uh, important reasons, but some of the water has to get into the leaves so that photosynthesis can happen. That vascular uh, tissue in vascular plants is called xylem, and so xylem is specialized vascular tissue that carries water from the roots to all parts of the plant. All right, so then. Those, are, those were our puzzle pieces and how they get into the plant for photosynthesis to happen. So now let's talk about the end result of the photosynthesis, which is to produce sugar or carbohydrates, simple carbohydrates like glucose. So, um, and then another product in the photosynthesis reaction is oxygen. Now, the plant does use some oxygen, um, but it doesn't need it as much as we do, like uh, animals do. So lucky for us, a lot of the oxygen that is produced through photosynthesis is released out through those stoma, stomata, again stomata is the plural, so the oxygen gets back out of the plant through the stomata so that it's in the air so we can breathe it. So really cool. So how does that sugar though get from the leaf where photosynthesis occurs? to all parts of the plant. Well, there's another vascular tissue in plants called phloem. And phloem does what xylem do, does for glucose, what xylem does for water. So phloem is a transport system that carries that glucose that's produced in the leaves to all parts of the plant. So it goes all the way down. So even if you have this huge, massive sequoia, like in the, in the photo, you've got xylem that's gonna take water from the leaves all the way up to the top, and then you've got phloem that's gonna carry any of that uh, sugar that's needed for energy for cell processes to all parts of the tree. Really cool vascular tissue. All right, so here are some of the key vocabulary that I mentioned and I think are uh, terms that you need to be familiar with in order to understand the process of photosynthesis. Of course, photosynthesis itself, we broke it down into its parts, photo meaning light and synthesis. And then we talked about chlorophyll and chloroplast. Chlorophyll is that green pigment that's able to absorb the light energy from the sun to power the process of photosynthesis. We've got chloroplast, those little organelle those little bodies within the cell where they hold all of the chlorophyll. Autotrophs are producers, organisms that make their own food, uh, usually, you know, sugar. Um, and they, you don't see a plant running across the ground to, you know, catch a rabbit and eat it, right? So they have to be able to produce their own food. Uh, we talked about vascular plants. Non-vascular plants are also... Um, also do photosynthesis, they just don't have xylem and phloem, so they do go about the process in a little bit different fashion. Uh, algae, some of those protists, those single-celled organisms that also do photosynthesis even though they're not plants. And the same thing with cyanobacteria, a type of bacteria that does photosynthesis. It's an autotroph, but it's not a plant. Uh, stoma and stomata, those openings that are created by the guard cells in the leaves, and our vascular tissue, tissue xylem and phloem. So I hope you learned a little bit about photosynthesis. We're going to continue this in class. We're going to go a little bit more in depth. I'm going to make you guys uh, search out how this all happens with non-vascular plants and some of these other organisms. So I hope, uh, hope this has been a really good lesson for you. Have a great day.